Live from Austin, Texas, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Dell World 2015, brought to you by Dell. Now your host, Stu Miniman. Welcome back to Dell World. I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon.com. Getting ready on day two for the closing keynote of Dell World. Happy to have back on the program for the second year in a row, Bob Wallace, VP of OEM Sales with Nutanix. Uh, welcome back, Bob. Glad to be here, Stu. All right, so, so Bob, last year we had you on the program. Talk, this is this big deal for, for, for Nutanix. I mean, I've, I've tracked Nutanix for a few years, but getting an OEM relationship with Dell made a lot of visibility. I think a lot of people now know uh, Nutanix a lot more. So bring us up, what's, what's the last year been like uh, for, for you inside the company and specifically the relationship with Dell? Yeah, so I'm, I'm, so I'm responsible for our relationship with Dell worldwide, and it's actually been phenomenal. I think uh, from all of the, uh, the goals that we had from the relationship, we've hit them all and we're accelerating that business. Uh, great engagement here with uh, a lot of customers, had a, a great opportunity to talk with a lot of our joint customers and engage with a lot of the Dell senior sales leadership and the individual sales reps and folks in the field that are uh, part of the team that sells the XC series uh, appliance. And I, it couldn't, couldn't have gone better. If we wrote the scripts, uh, we've pretty much uh, hit it. Yeah, so it, w w one of the tough things in my job is, you know, Nutanix is a startup in private. Dell's not a startup, well, maybe they are a startup as Michael Dell would say, but you know, they're private now too, so trying to measure you know, whether something's successful or not is, is challenging, but uh, you know, the Dell team shared with me that you know, jointly you guys have hundreds of customers, thousands of nodes, and what really impressed me is the global reach, uh, which I, I think helps accelerate Nutanix growth. So maybe can you comment you know, a little bit of color uh, on that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I can't give uh, too much detail on specifics, but yeah, we do have uh, a l very large number of customers. Uh, one of the things that was particularly uh, interesting in the, in the business that uh, we've done with Dell is a lot of new customers, both for Nutanix and Dell, so the relationship as we structured it, and the reason why we uh, entered into the relationship was, was Dell really gave us the opportunity to tap into and reach out to customers that with our own sales organization we didn't have the, 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 the ability to get to yet as a growing company. And so uh, the, the majority, the vast majority of the customers that we had are actually new customers to Nutanix, and that's really a speaks to uh, how good we worked together to open those new accounts. Yeah, it, it's interesting, we look at, one of the things you get with the Dell relationship is, is the reach, the channel, and everything goes on. I always look at a deal and say, okay, is this going to amplify the strengths that the companies have, mm. or is it going to bring in new markets? Mm -hmm. You know, when I look at Nutanix, I said early on, good strength in the federal division, you know, and VDI as a use cases, and I've, I've heard a lot of successes on that, so maybe, can we talk first about that, and then maybe, you know, some other use cases you've seen, so. Yeah. You know, I think the FBI was a big one. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe you can just share share with our users. Uh, yeah, there's you know, been, a, uh, so we did a, a press release that folks can access and uh, look up all the details, but a, a, a $28 million deal for Dell with the FBI, a, a massive uh, VDI opportunity. Uh, where they're essentially switching over to uh, XC hardware and Nutanix uh, web scale software for all of the VDI users at the FBI. And uh, that also, with that team, we're also leveraging that to other federal agencies. But what a lot of customers look at, particularly for VDI, when they're trying to make a decision about a VDI purchase, they'll they want to know what your bigger and larger VDI deployments are. They want to make sure you can scale because one of the key issues with VDI, as I'm sure you know, is a lot of the traditional infrastructure doesn't scale well. You can start off and do a pilot with 100 or so and it looks good, but when you really start to scale, it breaks down. And so that's one of the key differentiators from Nutanix and the Dell XC series that the FBI used to determine what they were going to do is really there was nothing else that they looked at that could scale and support their needs like uh, the XC series. Now, we have been uh, very successful in the VDI space, but it is only one of many different workloads that uh, the XC series and Nutanix really excels at. Uh, I, I think it's, it's good for us to be known and have a reputation for you know, being really good at VDI, but I think uh, what we're seeing now is 
uh, we're, we have the same ability to kind of change the game in server virtualization and big data and you know private cloud and running many other applications, even, even kind of tier one workloads. So uh, we do have a long string of, of customer successes with Dell in that area as well. Yeah, it, it's been interesting to watch, absolutely. You guys started with your name in VDI, but uh, I, I think the number I shared is, you know, sure you still do plenty of VDI, but uh, yeah, majority of, uh, of, of deployments are doing, if they are doing VDI, they're doing other stuff, and plenty right. that are you know, not buying you for VDI, just, just doing other things. So, a, any specific uh, examples with Dell uh, that you can share, or anecdotes even, maybe without a customer name, well, as we've, to uh, good use cases? What we, um, yeah, so we have, um, a, you know, a very large uh, retail customer that we've been working with, and one of the things that we see is they'll often start out with VDI, so they'll have a VDI need, and one of the things about VDI is typically they're deploying compute and storage at the same time, which really makes it uh, easier for a XE and Nutanix deployment there. But once they understand how the architecture works and how we scale, it's very, um, it, it tends to be very viral inside that organization. So what we find is we get a VDI deployment and then they'll have other workloads that come up and they need infrastructure for, and rather than go out and redeploy three-tier architecture or the kind of the old approach to data center infrastructure, they'll bring those workloads into the XC cluster and just expand the XC cluster because it's very easy to pay as you grow and expand that cluster. So it starts to absorb other workloads and other projects that customers have because it is so simple to use. Yeah, I, you know, one of the things we've looked at at Wikibon is if you look at the, just the total cost of what we spend on storage, at least 30% on that is what we call the general migration costs. So how long between when I buy it and when it's stood up because I got to get stuff onto it and I got to move it and stand it up and then upgrading it and then eventually taking it off versus really more of a pool architecture yep. when you get with a hyperconverged. I, I, I gave a talk, I actually said it's, uh, we're getting off of the you know, hamster wheel and you know, sitting in the infinity pool yeah, in, yeah. instead. So. Yeah, we just had a, a closed a, a deal with a very large uh, financial customer and on the deployment I read the feedback from the customer who sent an email to our uh, sales executives and said this is, doing this deployment took two days and a lot of that time was just people moving around and not actually deploying the hardware, in our previous infrastructure, it took them six months to deploy the same thing. And that's the kind of, you know, the, the we talk about simplicity and the challenge is there's a lot of organizations out there that want to talk about simplicity, that want to talk about uh, how easy it is to deploy, but in a lot of cases, what they're going to do is they're going to sell you a lot of PS so that you know, they, they got to feed their PS folks and uh, sell you a lot of services to get that to work. That's what hyperconvergence really brings to the table. It's not a, a converged infrastructure in that we can make a bunch of disparate pieces work together. We have one truly converged uh, solution and all the intelligence is in the software. It's very, very smart software that takes all that work away from, you know, you don't need to have a, a PhD in uh, how to, provision storage yeah. to be able to make it work. Yeah, it, it, actually I, I, I've been watching this space for a long time and we, we do a lot of education in the market and talk to all the users and the, the term that's come up over the last year that I hear is so much of IT today is friction. Mm -hmm. And what we need to be able to create is frictionless solutions. So yep. all of those areas that are going to stop me, slow me down, and make it you know more difficult to do my job and deliver for what the business needs. As you said, right? You know, I bring it. You know, two days from when it's in and up and everything is so much better than what I had. And how many people I have to get involved? Yep. You know, or so much less. You know, and I walk through with your team as to you know adding a node. It was like no walk me through. Okay, you plug in the power, you plug in the network, yeah. you turn everything on, and you are done. I mean, right. no, no, no. What what about this? No, no, it's Stu, it's, it's right. done, it just, it's yeah, so all the intelligence is in the software. Yeah. So, I, Nutanix really, we, we, we talk about invisible infrastructure, and I know that sounds like a very, you know, it's a very, sometimes can seem like a very soft marketing y term, but what it really means, and Michael talked about it in his keynote yesterday, is that customers shouldn't have to specialize in all the nuts and bolts of how to put together a data center. They shouldn't have to have a large portion of their staffs dedicated to just making uh, data center infrastructure work. That piece should be invisible to them. It should just work. And Nutanix really brings that to the table, not only with the hardware appliance, but also in our Acropolis hypervisor. So uh, 
you know, Nutanix announced uh, just a few months ago, uh, the uh, uh, cro Acropolis hypervisor that actually takes it up a, a level and put that data center infrastructure that you can deploy on a Nutanix product and really removes the, the hypervisor complexity from a customer's uh, worries. And a lot of that, uh, you know, a big piece of that is them paying a tax to a hypervisor vendor on a regular basis where they just, it's just an expense that they have to make and we can take that off the table for them. All right, so, so Bob, you gave me a good transition point into the elephant in the room here. So, a week ago, Dell made a definitive agreement to acquire EMC. EMC is owner of VMware, which competes with Acropolis. Sure. Uh, you know, Dell's going to have this whole big storage portfolio uh, and, you know, Relationships become, I guess it's a little bit, it's complicated. Yeah. So what, what, what does the Dell EMC deal mean to uh, you know, Nutanix and the Nutanix-Dell relationship? Well you know, Dell has a real strong history in being able to, to balance different products that maybe overlap in different areas and, and give uh, customers the ability to evaluate those different products and make the choice for what's best for them. I really don't think you know that, that this has been. There's been a lot of chatter about this. I think it's died down because, there, in reality, in my mind at least, the scenarios in which Dell and Nutanix aren't partners because of this reason, you know, a year from now, are very kind of far-fetched scenarios in my mind. There's every reason that EMC, the combined EMC Dell. Uh, company is still going to want to be offering the XC series appliance to their customers. Uh, I myself have worked with worked at EMC in the past. At that time, we as EMC owned VMware, and VMware still operated as very much an independent company as it does today. And VMware has a, a lot of partnerships that I'm sure uh, Dell doesn't want to disrupt by being too prescriptive about how they integrate them. Yeah, so I, I guess my commentary on it, Bob, is uh, nobody in the industry wants to make it difficult for customers or to turn business away. That being said, you know, EMC, very much aware of what's going on in Hyperconverge, have a number of assets, not just what VMware, but the scale I.O. acquisition, and they're doing a lot with that. Sure. So, um, you know, I, I think there's risk, uh, you know, over, uh, you know, the next year as to where we sit. I say if I look out two years from now, I find it, you know, difficult to see as to the mix of what hyperconverged offers they have if, you know, Dell and EMC have, you know, a real self-interest to, to push certain things. That being said, they're, they're, you know, working a lot on the networking side with open operating systems. Uh, Nutanix software is adding value and customers are in into it. You know, Dell wants to sell lots of servers. So, um, it'll be interesting to watch yeah. it play out. You know, congratulations on the success going forward. Uh, you know, and uh, yeah, a, 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 any final notes you want to have, kind of customer discussion points here. Um, you know, I, I, I think we, we say customers, are a little bit more likely, it's like, I need to do this this quarter, I need to do it now, you know, I am making strategic decisions, the channel is a little concerned as to mm -hmm. what's going on, and yeah. there's a lot to go down there, but, you know, what, what, what's your takeaway from kind of the show overall, and any Nutanix specific things that we should know about? Um, uh, well, so I think there is a lot of, I think everyone's still digesting what uh, the, the, this merger might mean if it goes through. And uh, as I said, I think we, we put a lot of, you know, obviously it, it was uh, something that we put a lot of thought into, but when you look at the scenarios in the future, uh, I really think what Nutanix does is something that EMC can't offer today. It's something that Dell can't offer today. It's something VMware can't do successfully today. What they do, they, they can do it successfully. If you look at uh, how much uh, of the, their uh, hyper-converged solution actually gets sold, a very small number. So, as I said, I think the, the Dell team that at some point, uh, you know, nine months from now or whenever has to sit down to make a decision and say, is this a, a product that we want to still be able to offer our customers? I think it's absolutely uh, going to be a yes. Uh, and we will continue to support customers. Realistically, the, the NX and the XC series um, you know, live together in harmony. So any customer who's considering XC today We'll know that you know Nutanix as a company will continue to support them, you know, indefinitely, and we'll do what it takes to make sure that 
um, their investments, um, they can ex continue to expand it with Nutanix. All right, well Bob, congratulations on the success so, so far. Look forward to catching up. Thanks, Stu. Uh, Nutanix next next year, Dell World next year, and the proof's in the pudding, as, uh, right. as you said. Uh, there are a lot of plays still to be made as we look at this, um, but uh, we'll be back uh, after the keynote uh, here at Dell World 2015. This is theCUBE.